So thank you for being here. I know it's a single track thing, but still. Um, so I will talk about uh, trees, and uh, you probably know the, the golden hammer syndrome, which is uh, when you only have a hammer, uh, everything looks like a nail, so obviously even if it's not a nail here. So what happens when all, all your problem looks like trees? Uh, probably what you need is more a chainsaw, and uh, it's a topic of this talk. Uh, so I rename it a bit, a bit to Unlinked Trees with Chainsaw, uh, which is more accurate uh, given what I'm going to say. Uh, so, so first, uh, let's uh, introduce myself. Uh, so I'm a software crafter working in software development for more than 20 years, I guess. Um, I'm writing mainly Scala for some years, and uh, I recently graduated to full stack developer, uh, and I know right Elm half of my, time, of my time actually, so it's quite fun. Uh, and I'm a freelancer by the way. So what's the agenda? It's quite short. Uh, the first, thing, first part is, oh, I became a tree expert. So spoiler, I'm not. Um, second part will be about rose tree. Um, and we'll talk about the definition and then we'll see some code, which is an interesting part, I guess. So, uh, how I became a tree expert. Uh, I had a new mission where, for some reason, uh, I had a lot of uh, business problems to solve that were related to trees. Um, I worked with, uh, I had to handle JSON schemas, uh, JSON documents, which are uh, some kind of trees. I uh, had to also work on an AST for a kind of language editor and, and its runtime. So it's all problems that are related to trees. And as we saw this morning uh, with uh, Scalafix talk, uh, yeah, everything looks like a trees when you talk about language. Uh, so um, what's a tree first? Uh, so the obvious definition is a case class with some data in it and, and some children of the same, which is a list of the same type. So it's a recursive type, basically. And uh, oh, uh, you will do a, a traversal uh, of a tree. So given a, a parse function that take a string and return a hint, uh, doing uh, a traversal of a tree is usually uh, taking this tree and pot and match on it. Uh, you will first uh, parse the data part of your node and then you will recurse on the children. So here it's one of the simplest uh, methods you could write that because it's output a list so you don't have to handle some complex uh, data structure as an as a output. So uh, it's quite easy to write but you will basically, basically do it for uh, based on recursion. Um, it's a bit like if uh, when you have a list, you will write that method, uh, which is completely valid. It's what you learn when you learn FP, actually. Uh, but it's not what you will do in a daily basis. Um, what you will do is probably more what's written here. I don't know if everybody is seeing it, but it's, uh, you, you will just call map with your parse function because it's much easier. And also, the problem with recursion in this case is that you are mixing uh, what you want to do uh, on your data with the way you traverse the data structure. And it's not something you really like to do. You would like to have in one side how you traverse something and the, on the other side what you want to do with uh, the things that you, you get. Um, so we all love our high level operators, map, flat map, filter, collect, and so on. And so, um, when I had this trees problem, I wanted to use this operator on trees. I said, yeah, probably somebody already thought about that and, and uh, wrote a library to it. Uh, but no luck, uh, I tried to find a library and couldn't find one. So, yeah, if you know one, just tell me, but after, so that it doesn't ruin my talk. Uh, <laughs> And then uh, I um, 
I, I, I wrote thing with the recursive uh, thing again and again. It was a bit boring, but it's uh, the way it was already done in the code base. Um, but then I had the same kind of problem on the Elm part, on the front end. And so I tried again. And yeah, I found some things about trees in Elm. And I discovered a rose tree. So what is a rose tree? Okay, let's talk a bit about the, this talk first. Uh, so uh, <laughs> uh, I found this rose tree thing and I started doing a POC uh, on the code base trying to migrate thing on, on using this rose tree lib. And then uh, I said to myself, yeah, let, let's propose a talk to Scala.io because it's almost a deadline and I will probably uh, know about trees uh, by then. <laughs> Um, obviously, the talk is about Rostry in Scala, overlooking the fact that there is no uh, library for Rostry in Scala. And I moved on to something else that is not tree related at work, and so I left the POC where it's where, and so the POC won't go in production anytime soon. And yeah, the last part of drama, my talk is selected, so I'm here, and so. I'm talking about trees, uh, but never went into production with rose trees. So, um, please be kind to me. Uh, if I say, and when I say something stupid, please be gentle with me. And uh, we can talk about all that around the beer. It may be easier than having your uh, direct feedback right now. So, <laughs> okay, what about rose tree? So Rust tree looks like a lot what we saw before, but with a, a, T, a type T, which is a, uh, a parameter, so you can obviously choose the type of your la label. The data is called label. I don't know why it's, uh, it's like that, and children are obvious. Um, without Rust tree, what you will declare is something. So you will de declare your case class thing, and then you will have fields with your uh, data you need, and then this children thing. Um, so if you do want to do the same using a rose tree uh, data structure, you will uh, have to declare a thing label which uh, contains all the fields you will have uh, put in directly in your thing uh, case class. And it could be a bit of work. You probably prefer the, the middle uh, solution, but it brings you map, filter, collect, and so on, so it's uh, probably worth it. Uh, so what about chainsaw? So I, I talked about chainsaw uh, in the beginning. So uh, actually, I had to write a library to be able to, to do this talk. So uh, it's my new alpha level library. Uh, it's a part of Elm Rose Tree, which is a library I found for, for Helm. Uh, it's, it was not yet on Maven Central yesterday, but I got it yesterday night. So you can actually download it, it in, as a dependency, but uh, there is no stable API right now because I want to explore a bit more uh, the API bef before releasing it. And yeah, if you want to try it anyway, uh, yeah, do it. It will be a, a pleasure to talk about it. So. Talk it cheap to show me the code. So what are we going to do? Um, basically, I take example on list and then I translate them to, to trees so that we can see operators we know, how it works on list, how it's different on trees. So here yeah, I have a, just uh, an ADT type trees which are uh, three types of trees and I have parse function that take a, a, a string and transform it to, to this type. If I have a list of these strings, I'm able to uh, call parse on it and it retrieves, returns me a, a, list, a list of trees. So really obvious you do that every day. Uh, same thing on trees. On trees you will do, you will declare your tree structure here. I try to indent it in a tree way so that it's more readable. And then uh, you can call parse, so it's really obvious. And thanks to Rose Tree, you don't have to do a recursive thing uh, to, to, to do that. Um, let's move on to filter, which is a bit more interesting. So here I have a list of things. Uh, there are 
house related things and tree related things and I want to keep only house related things and so you have this list with houses. Uh, you can do the same thing on tree and as you can see we are just filtering out trees, there is nothing surprising, uh, you have this output. What's a bit more surprising maybe is that if you say I will filter out houses only uh, as the trees are children of your arses, you, you end up with only the first level of your tree. So a filter is uh, literally cutting branches. So you, you won't parse, you won't have a chance to, to parse uh, trees uh, under arses. So yeah, it's a minor difference with list, but still it's interesting. Um, let's move on to collect, so you probably know collect too, uh, so it takes a partial function which is defined there. And then uh, when you call collect with your parse method, you just ignore things that are not handled by your partial function. It's the same thing for trees, so here it's a, a, a tree with um, an olive tree that won't be parsed here and a building that won't be parsed here. So for the same reason as filter, as you are not able to build this building node, you won't even parse as a, as a evergreen part. So yeah, so it's quite straightforward. And so uh, let's move on to fold left. So fold left is basically, here I define a function that tells you how much energy you can get if you burn some tree related thing. And then you will accumulate thing using fold left. So you define an accumulator, it's, here it's an int, and then you call uh, energy on each uh, input type and add that to the accumulator. And so you get really nice uh, sum of the energy you can get. Uh, it's the same thing for tree. Um, you accumulate, accumulate the same way, you call the same function, it looks a lot like uh, the, the same thing on, on list. But uh, the question is, how is the tree traversed? Because it doesn't really make sense to say it's from left to right. It's a two-dimensional thing, whereas uh, left to right and, and top to bottom, basically. Uh, so uh, I did this. Uh, Another output where I zip things with their pass. Uh, the pass is quite easy to understand, so you increment uh, the index for each children. And so, as you can see, um, it's going from root to leaves in a way that you are guaranteed that every time you handle a node, all the parents of this node already has been handled. So, it's a, almost the, the only guarantee you have uh, is that. So it allows to rebuild, for example, in their kind of tree, or maybe accumulate uh, in another way, by example, by putting, I don't know, things in an ash map you can look up for your parents because you know they are already has been handled. Um, okay, so it's fold left, and there is fold right, and fold right is exactly the, the opposite, you know, you have the guarantee that every time you handle nodes, the children already has been handled, so it's quite the opposite. Um, let's move on to Traverse. Um, everybody's know, knowing Traverse, who, who knows Traverse? Use it, yeah, of course. So, um, you have your power function returning an effect here, it's either and uh, it allows to handle, uh, to, to return an error message when you are not able to parse something and here, instead of having a, a, a list of either, uh, when you call parse, you have an either of list. So either everything is handled well and you have a list uh, of the results or you have the error message. Um, so you can do the same thing with a, a tree by importing the right, uh, the right type class. So here it's implemented with cats, but it could be in with any other uh, library. Um, and so you have a valid um, tree and an invalid tree you call uh, traverse with your parse method and everything is working as you would expect. So you can 
use Traverse with, it opens the door to, uh, of course, either things, but also if you have uh, trees and you want to do IOs on it, for example, you want to introduce things in a DB or do some REST call or something like that, you can couple your uh, tree with some IO and have an IO of tree in the end. So, uh, yeah, it opened a lot of the door. So, conclusion now. Oh, I, I went really fast, sorry. <laughs> um, trees are really like most data structure, you know, it's nothing fancy. Um, you just want, you just don't want to recurse on it because, yeah, we, we prefer our high level operators. Um, one thing you maybe you noticed is that we didn't see flat map. And I'm not sure it's a good idea to have flat map in, on trees and maybe see, uh, if somebody has opinion about that, I, I, I'm really, I will be really happy to, to talk about it. Um, there are a lot and lots of other operators because I, as you probably noticed, we did only two kind of traversal. You obviously has more uh, way to traverse a tree than two. Um, you have also things like zip, you can zip two trees uh, together, uh, which is really uh, used uh, really often. Um, you have Mapacum, I have an actual talk about Mapacum, I love it a lot, so if you like Mapacum, come talk to me. Uh, index map, uh, unfold, unfold is also really cool because it allows to define um, a lazy tree that will expand uh, with a function so you can define infinite trees and maybe uh, zip them with another tree and, and have a result and things like that. So uh, Unfold is really interesting too. Uh, so it's an actual library right now uh, and you can contribute to it if, if you like trees or you want to explore that kind of thing. The code and the slides are there and the project is here. And yeah, it's time for a question. Thank you. So um, I have a question on folding because you said so fold left is listing um, a parent before its uh, children. Yeah. But then I saw it's also listing the children from left to right, right? And you. Sorry? It's listing the children from left to right. Yeah. Right? Uh, but then fold right is not doing what I expected because I, I expected it to do the same thing as fold left, but listing the children from right to left, right? So a, a right first traversal of the tree or something like this. Yes. Uh, so. Um it's why I, the only guarantee I described was about, uh, you know that you have uh, children before parents or, or the opposite. Um, I don't know if uh, children, uh, children uh, are not necessarily uh, order, you know, here, here you, we, we can suppose they are, but it doesn't have to be. So I don't know, um, maybe just a bug I, I have to fix. So <laughs> thank you for, for that. So come on, say it. Uh, I'm not sure I, I got the difference between ROS tree and habitual binary tree. The, the main thing that make them available, uh, uh, able to, to have all the collect and extra easy. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but binary tree is about uh, sorting things. Uh, so you usually put things in, in binary trees so, so that you can, uh, uh, when you add things, they just get put in the right place to, to keep an ordering. Here it's not at all related to ordering or anything, it's just the way you structure data, like a JSON, uh, JSON document, a JSON schema, and AST or so on. So I don't know, I, I think binary tree is, is not the same use case. But Maybe some people knowing more about binary tree here. <laughs> uh, uh, and what is the the usage the use case for the label thing? You have a label in the tree. The label is actually holding the data of your nodes. 
So it's it's a part where you you put your the actual data of a, a given node. So it's called label. I don't know why. It's a, how it's defined in the paper. Uh, but yeah, it's the part where which is holding data. Okay, and so the fact that there is that uh, that the data are external to the tree make it possible to have the map and etc. In fact, you have to 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 be abstract about the data type you 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 put in it. So otherwise, it's not a library basically. Um, so here, the thing is, um, you can very well have that kind of thing in your code today. And to use Rostry, you have to say, okay, these things are my data. So let's define a case class for what what the data all in Node and putting a T. That's the only difference. And for a record, I try to implement that with uh, type class, so you don't have to write this thing. And I think it's not working uh, for a theoretical reason, like you can't uh, go back to thing. You you can very well have things uh, have. Um, trying to call map on that and have a tree of something, but you can't come back to your type because you change the type of the label with map directly. So you can't go back to that. So it's a reason why I, I tried with the idea of having that with type class to prevent from doing the, the thing. Uh, but it, it, I think it couldn't work. Um, <clears throat> and what is your relation uh, with tree now? And do you have a nice idea to put them in production and maybe making a general tree purpose library, uh, implementing, for example, all of abstraction that can take the global trunk of one tree and uh, having more complicated tree like finger tree or stuff like that? Um, so I don't, I'm not sure I, I get your idea. The question is... Uh, do you love tree and do you uh, make it, put it a lot in production and make a very general library to deal yeah. with trees in Scala tree? Yeah, I, I think I, I will probably move on something completely different be, become, before <laughs> coming to that point, you know. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi. Um, just a question about your uh, Rostry. Uh, do you intend or have you provided instances for uh, typical type classes from the CATS kernel? Like functor, traverse, everything. So traverse, yes, it's a the slide I show. Um, I didn't wrote the the other one uh, for now, but it's completely planned. For now, there's a single uh, model in the SBT project with everything like uh, cat's dependency and so on. So it's obviously not the right way to do it. But I intend to uh, have a cat's model with the type classes and. Uh, maybe a zero one uh, with the right type of classes and so on because it's not hard to to write it's just a, a few lines and I think it's valuable to to reuse. Uh, don't forget to check for the lows. Sorry. Don't forget to check for the lows. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank, Thank you. Um, to recurse a tree, uh, you have the concepts of. Threads first or depths first? Yeah. Um, I thought it, it would be nice to make it explicit, maybe in your library. Yeah, I in agree. Uh, actually, uh, so initially it's a, a part of an existing library, and uh, I, I just uh, took the name of methods there, but uh, they also have in a later version of the library that I discovered only l too late to, to adapt it, they started to have these names like uh, dev first, uh, breast, uh, ref, uh, traversal and so on, so I will definitely at least have uh, aliases for them and I will probably also implement the missing traversal that I, I don't have yet because yeah, uh, dev first, for example, I don't, I don't have it for, for now. But yeah, definitely on the on the roadmap of the few things I will do before getting born and move to something else. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>